to welcome everybody today to the uh, Socialist Party branch meeting. Uh, tonight we've got a discussion on uh, the fight for decent jobs, pay and conditions for all in light of the uh, many disputes that are taking place in Australia at the present uh, time. Uh, David Souter will be speaking. David's a CSA uh, delegate and councillor and he will speak for around 15 to 20 minutes. Thank you, David. Thanks, Nick. Um, on the 29th of November, thousands of workers marched, um, marched through Perth CBD to demand an end to the race at the bottom and to demand an end to the exploitation of foreign workers and to demand training for young West Australian workers. Reports ranged from over 1,000 to up to 5,000 people in attendance at the rally. And what was clear was the level of anger towards Chevron, the main target of the rally, and, and their undermining of wages and conditions, um, and the lack of training opportunities for young people in, in Western Australia at the present time. Um, as was pointed out by Meredith Hammond, who's the um, New News WA president, apprenticeships in WA have been on the decline since 2008, and youth unemployment is, is at over 20% in some areas of Western Australia. This is in the middle of a so-called resource boom, and while companies such as Chevron and BHP record massive levels of profits, to so many West Australians, this resource boom may as well be happening on the other side of the world. But it is not only in the resource sector that workers are coming under attack. Recently, public sector workers have come under attack in a number of states, and, um, and no, most notably recently so, this has been with the nurses in Victoria. We've seen disputes on the waterfront between the MUA and Patrick Stevedores raising the memory of the 1998 waterfront dispute. In one of the most significant disputes since that time, we've seen Qantas ground its entire fleet and lock out workers, exposing the fact that under the so-called uh, so and misnamed Fair Work Act, workers do not even have the right to strike. That employers can simply force them out into arbitration, and then this is an arbitration system which is slanted towards the employers and which will not act over the central claim from workers in this dispute for, for basic job security. The unions involved are now locked in a legal battle where they are, um, <coughs> where they are trying to have the uh, Fair Work Australia ruling overturned and, uh, and this, this would be to allow um, protected industrial action to continue. And while we wish them the best of luck with the courts, um, I, I think it is unlikely that they're going to have any joy on that endeavour. And, um, you know, especially when we have a system that is set up to favour the employer, we would suggest that a far better route would be to say bad laws need to be broken and that the union movement as a whole should be mobilised to fight for the right to strike and to not rely on the, on the courts of the bosses. <clears throat> now, there are a whole number of other disputes that we could list that have been going on in, in, in Australia at the moment, um, e even, even in a, a time when we're not feeling the full pinch of the global financial crisis. But I think that the, the point I wanted to make is that the bosses are aware of the threat to the Australian economy um, posed by the crisis that is engulfing Europe and, and the US at the present time. And uh, um, they are testing out the weapons they have available, available to them under the Fair Work Act and under the industrial relations system um, that we have in Australia so that they know how they can undermine wage and conditions so that, they can prepare, so that they can prepare to make it easier to slash jobs later on. Every day in the press we are reading about at the moment the need for flexibility within the industrial relations system. Um, or about management prerogatives and, and union, union power encroaching on, on, on these prerogatives. You know, just, just a few headlines recently, bosses fight for their rights, labour attack on big business, or um, Corrigan, the IR, the IR system is broken. These are just numerous accounts that are coming up on a daily basis within, within the serious press about the need to undermine the working conditions of, of, of Australians. Now all of this is code for just that, but they want to be able to take back wages, they want to be able to take back conditions, and that they want to be able to slash jobs when the, when the, when the down come, comes, in, um, comes in earnest. And, uh, and in the resource sector, this is, uh, this is especially the case, very clearly. Chevron, which is one of the world's biggest companies um, in, in the world, is uh, for the past five years, it has been ranked as one of America's five largest corporations. In 2011, it was ranked as the 16th largest public company in the world. In Australia, it has made absolutely colossal pro uh, profits and has embarked on the largest single resource investment in Australia's history. That's the $43 billion Gorgon LNG project going on in the, in the north of WA at the moment, where they, where they have a 47% stake and are, and are the project operators. Um, and, and really, as a result, 
of the success of unions in, in the resource sector, in fighting for wages and conditions. Chevron is now attempting to undermine those jobs, is, is attempting to undermine those conditions and wages, using the skills shortage as an, 